let me find out that you guys are putting baby blankets on your registry and we're gonna have a problem. Don't do it. For some reason, this is always so controversial for everybody over do you get one? Do you not get one? What brand to get? Do not be that person that registers for like 47 towels, three baby bathrobes and 13 washcloths. Don't do it. Refrain, like withhold yourself from hitting that add to registry button. Don't do it. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Alyssa. I am a 25 year old first time mom and my son Reese is about four and a half months old. And I thought today I kind of sit down and give first time moms a checklist or what you should actually register for. I have talked about my baby must haves. I have talked about baby dupes, but I haven't really found anybody that has like a clear and concise list of, yeah, go through this checklist and make sure you're hitting everything on your registry. So let's get right into it. So the first thing you'll need to decide when you are building your registry is where to register. I'm sure at this point you've probably heard of Baby List, but if you haven't, it's a universal baby registry website and it allows you to register for gifts from Target, Amazon, Etsy, Pottery Barn, and it'll consolidate it into one list for you. Baby List will automatically also separate it into different price points too. So you'll wanna make sure that you're registering for products that are of all different price points depending on everybody's budgets. I separated mine into categories just to kind of make it easier for everybody. So in the first category, I put our rocker. We've talked about this multiple times in other videos. It's a glider by the brand Da Vinci. It's worked well. It's me and Dakota are pretty tall people. So it works well for our back support, comfortable, not super gaudy and flashy. And I just think it tucks nicely into our nursery. So register for a rocker. When it comes to our glider, we actually didn't get this as a gift, but we were able to still use our registry discount completion code of 15%. So it worked out well. I encourage you to put higher priced items on there. And if you don't get them, you'll still get a 15% off discount. We also put our crib. Reese's crib is convertible. So it also will move into a day bed and a toddler bed. And then they also have ones that'll move into like a full size bed as well. We registered for our mattress. We had the Newton baby crib mattress, the dupe. So it's definitely just as great, but it's not nearly as costly as the original Newton mattresses. And we also registered for his bassinet. I recommend you get a good bassinet Bassinet. Ours has a bar that goes down, so it was a lot easier to get him in and out of the bassinet at nighttime. And then it also has wheels, so we were whipping that thing from different rooms in our upstairs when he was little, and it was just fantastic. I also recommend you register for your dresser. Like, I think a lot of times people think that no one's willing to gift furniture pieces for the nursery, but I know that people really appreciate when you have photos or videos showing your child's nursery. Just the fact that, like, they know that they had a part in decorating that nursery. I think is really exciting and rewarding for some people. So throw that baby furniture on there. So we just got a nice simple dresser, nothing super large, nothing super fancy, but it definitely will be a dresser that will grow with him as he continues to get older. In terms of diapering, we registered for the Kikaroo peanut changer. I've raved about this. I think it was in my newborn essential videos, but I highly recommend you get yourself a wipeable changing pad. It doesn't have to be the Kikaroo because that's a lot pricier for some people, but I've listed a bunch of dupe options you can get too, but you'll want to get one that can easily just be thrown on top of your dresser. Don't make that mistake of letting Bye Bye Baby sucker you into getting that like fourth piece of furniture that's strictly like a changing table that you build and you put the changing table on top. Don't do it because what are you gonna use that furniture for when you no longer need to change your child's diaper? Just get one that you can put on top of your dresser and then when your child no longer needs it, you can easily tuck it away in the closet and you have a full functioning dresser. You'll also wanna register for a diaper pail. For some reason, this is always so controversial for everybody over do you get one? Do you not get one? What brand to get? I don't know why it's always such a big deal, but we have the Munchkin Step Diaper Pail. We got it from Target and it has worked beautifully for us. It has a nice step so you can just step on it, put the diaper in and close it. It has a baking soda cartridge in there so it never stinks. And it has bags that you can just pull through every time you need to tie it up and toss the next one. So it's very convenient. We've never had a smell issue. It works well, it hasn't broken. So if you're kind of in the search of a good diaper pail, check out the Munchkin Step. Along with the actual pail itself, we registered for a year supply of the Munchkin Step diaper bags. My previous manager actually gifted it to us. So we have the pail and then we had the bags and that was all set to go. So we've never had to worry about that. 
I highly recommend registering for a good diaper bag. Make sure you get one that has the backpack straps. 10 out of 10 recommend. I can never picture myself using the purse style bags. In my opinion, I think that Reese is squirmy and you already have so many things you're trying to carry all the time that the backpack just works great. We have the Itsy Ritzy Boss Bag and it has held up fantastic so far. We also registered for the accessories. This is kind of one of those things where it's not an essential, you don't have to have it, but as a first time mom, I wanted everything to be cute and coordinating. You'll wanna make sure that you have some sort of system in place for when you do get your diaper bag to make sure it doesn't get all disorganized. <laughs> as far as actual diapers and wipes go, I recommend not putting them on your registry. I think that sometimes people think that you have to put them on there and no, you have so many more things you need as a first time parent than the actual diapers and wipes. You can get those at any time and for pretty much different price points depending on what you need. So I definitely recommend putting your essentials of what you need on that registry and don't waste your time with diapers and wipes. For us, we had a gender reveal and we put a diaper raffle with the invitation. And so if you brought a pack of diapers, you got a ticket to be entered into a raffle to win a gift card. So that really built a really great stockpile of diapers and wipes. So we were set for several months after Reese was born. I recently just had to start buying diapers and it's been four months. I also think that if you're not having a gender reveal, you can still do a diaper raffle at your baby shower too. So people will gift them to you. I promise you people know that babies need them and so sometimes they just throw in an extra pack with their presents and you'll be fine. In terms of my health and safety category, I recommend registering for a sound machine. Amazon has a plethora of different sound machines. We had the Hatch Mini. I talked about how if you're looking to also get a hatch, go with the regular standard size hatch because you have the option to set timers. Mine does not have that option where it can turn on at seven o'clock at night and turn off at 7 a.m. and I wish that it did. So don't make that mistake if that's something that you're looking for, but get a good quality sound machine. I do find that it does make a difference in how soundly Reese sleeps and he sleeps like a rock. So get a good sound machine. I also recommend registering for a baby monitor. I know a lot of you are probably like, well, the baby's gonna be sleeping in my room, so why do I need a baby monitor? And for us, Reese was spending the first several weeks in our room and then around six weeks or so, I started transitioning him to take naps in his crib during the day when I started sleep training him. And then he quickly progressed to sleeping in his crib at night as well pretty early on. And so I don't think that there's a fault. It's not like the camera can expire. Get a camera, set it up and have it ready to go. That way you can get your baby transitioned and start sleep training and sleeping through the night very soon so you can have your sanity back. We have the Dr. Meter, love it, zero complaints about it. And it's pretty affordable, I think, as far as what it comes with and what the quality is. Now, don't make the same mistakes I did. We registered for a medicine kit, an electric nail file that everybody talks about, and a hairbrush set. And I don't think you need to register for those. Their hair pretty much falls out, so you won't really need a hairbrush. I think the medicine kit was a bit extra. Just get a single bottle of Tylenol and you'll be fine. And then as far as the electric nail files go, I think they're just way too aggressive for how frail Reese's nails were. So I ended up going to Target and getting like the $3 like safety first baby mini clippers. I think the only other health and safety item that I think you should have on hand is a thermometer. We have the Frida baby one and it is a mouth, armpit and rectal three in one. And it has worked out great. Um, we definitely took Reese's temperature when he got his two month shots and it was nice to have that already in our stockpile. So you can pretty much just get away with a bottle of Tylenol for when they have their shots and they're uncomfortable and a thermometer. Don't waste your money or your time registering for all the craziness. I promise you, you won't need it and it'll just be hoarding in your dresser like it is with ours. As far as transportation goes, we did register for car seats. Um, we chose to forego the like infant carry car seat that everybody has just because they get really heavy really fast and they can only use it for a short period of time. And so I just really wasn't sure if it was worth the price that you typically pay for the use. Jury's still out if I'll do that with two children, but with one, I could easily just carry him or put him in a carrier and go about my day. So we chose to register for two convertible car seats, one for each of our cars. We were really gracious gifted both of these which are pretty high point items and it was just so nice that people bought them and we didn't have to worry about getting duplicates for each of our cars. We also registered for two mirrors to go in the back seat so that way we can see Reese 
and we registered for two like shaded window covers. Some people might argue that you don't need the mirror or you don't need the window covers. They're not an essential, but I'll never not have them. I have so much peace of mind being able to look in the mirror and see Reese. The window covers that we have are magnetic, so they definitely do a good job of staying up and keeping the shade out of his face. You'll want to also make sure that you put your stroller on there. We have the Up A Baby Cruise, and although strollers do typically tend to be more expensive, like I've said, if you don't get it gifted to you, that's fine you can use your 15% completion discount. I think a lot of times people worry about putting higher priced items on there that they're gonna come off as greedy or people aren't gonna like them and think that they're asking too much. And I actually don't think that's the case. I think a lot of times people that have had children know how expensive baby stuff is, hence why everybody is just rallying around you to support you and to get you different products. And it's okay if somebody gets something more expensive and somebody gets something less expensive, it's not a judgment of how much they love you. Um, so if it's in someone's budget, great. If it's not, that's fine too. Just don't sell yourself short. Put what you want on there. Put what you think you're gonna need and you'll be surprised with how many people are willing to support you and support your child. You'll wanna also make sure that you're registering for a baby carrier. We had gotten the Baby Bjorn Mini just because we thought it was gonna work really well. It was a jersey material, so it was nice and soft and it like kind of curved to raise his body when he was a newborn and it worked out great. Now that he's a little bit older and a lot heavier, um, it's hurting my back to wear that one. So I talked about that in my newborn regrets. I have since gone and gotten like a cheap, like $35 one. And it's amazing the quality that you get. And it definitely helps kind of alleviate that back pain. So I'll make sure to link that down below, but do your research, get a good carrier. It doesn't have to be a name brand one to actually work really well. I think that's a big misconception that there's like three or four main company ones and the rest aren't very good, but um, I found that the less known brands actually work out a lot better for weight distribution. So get a good carrier. Don't make my mistake. Next, in terms of baby gear, I recommend you get like a rocker or a bouncer. They have been amazing for us. We had the Dream On Me rocker and it's great. You'll wanna just make sure it's nice and portable and it can fold flat for storage. You'll also wanna make sure that you get a baby gym depending on whatever your price point is, just get something that is somewhere where you can lay your baby down to look up at things when they're on their back, put it in front of them if they're doing tummy time, just a nice spot. Ours is portable and it doubles as a decor piece in Reese's nursery when we're not using it. So whichever one you choose, just get some sort of baby gym. I also recommend that you get a swing. Here's the thing. I knew we were gonna get the Mamaroo, but I knew I could get it for really cheap off of Facebook Marketplace. So I chose to not put that on my registry. If you're someone that doesn't really like to shop secondhand or just prefers to get brand new items, put a Mamaroo or a baby swing on your registry. And then I also recommend putting an activity center. Again, if you don't plan to buy it off of Facebook Marketplace, I knew I was going to because I had seen them multiple times and they were always for sale. And I like shopping secondhand if it can save me a couple dollars. So it didn't go directly on our registry, but if not, activity center and a swing, definitely put them on your registry. I definitely recommend registering for some sort of playpen. We had actually not put one on our registry because we had gotten the four moms playpen off of Facebook marketplace for like 30 or $40. And while it really is easy to use, it's so gosh darn heavy. And I wish that I had checked the weight of the playpen before choosing to get that one. Um, because I wouldn't have chosen it because it's like 30 pounds to lug around. So if you do decide to get a playpen, make sure you're checking how much the weight is of it and throw it on your registry because we have gotten so much more use out of our playpen. We got the Baby Joy one and it's like less than 10 pounds and it works amazing. So register for a playpen. For feeding, you'll want to go ahead and get the Boppy pillow. I have actually gotten the Boppy and the My Breast Friend. I now prefer the Boppy pillow. So register for a Boppy if you plan to breastfeed. If you are not a breastfeeding mom, that's cool too. The boppy works great for tummy time and also works when they're looking for support when they're trying to sit up. So it's a really multi-use function pillow and it works out well, so get a boppy. You'll also wanna make sure in your feeding category, you're putting some sort of high chair. We registered for the Bumbo where it has the tray attachment to it. It'll work as a booster seat too in the future when Reese gets a little bit older. It's also nice because it's portable so we can bring it to my mom's house, my sister's house, Dakota's mom's house what have you. We didn't register for one of like the large stereotypical like plastic high chairs you would see at Bye Bye Baby or Target because we knew we were gonna try and find like a wooden one off of Facebook Marketplace and now we use that. Clearly you can tell a trend. Um, Facebook Marketplace is my go-to if I want to get specific items. People sell things all the time in great condition for a really affordable price. So don't be afraid to check out Facebook Marketplace. 
You'll want to register for a nursing cover if you are not someone that likes to breastfeed in public without one. Ours was from Copper Pearl, so you can grab that. I also recommend registering for a haka. I know if you are breastfeeding, um, a lot of times in the boob you're not feeding on, you have letdown, so the haka works great to kind of catch that and help build your supply for you. And then bottles. I knew that I always planned to breastfeed, but I also had planned to pump or to use my stash. Now Reese is obviously strictly formula fed, so we're really getting use out of our bottles, but we have the glass Dr. Brown bottles and they're amazing. I've never had an issue with mold growing in them or leaking. I like that they're glass, so they don't get weirdly discolored over time like some of the plastic ones do. So don't go crazy registering for a bunch of different bottles because a lot of times babies can be kind of picky. I know that we lucked out when just registering for the Dr. Brown's bottles. It was a two pack and Reese took them, no problem. But you don't wanna load up with like 12 12 bottles and find that your child doesn't like them. So register for one or two brands and just let it be and sort it out and you can always exchange it later on if it's not the right fit for your child. In terms of bathing, do not be that person that registers for like 47 towels, three baby bathrobes and 13 washcloths. Don't do it. Refrain, like withhold yourself from hitting that add to registry button. Don't do it. I promise you, you don't need that much. We registered for one bath towel. It was by the name Hip Hop Panda. It works perfectly fine for us. And Reese gets a bath every single night. Um, he definitely will use that towel like two or three times. And I'm probably washing it like twice a week and we're perfectly fine because he's clean when he's using it. And we also registered for a six packs of washcloths. And I don't think we've ever had more than like three dirty at one time. So don't register for too many because you will have just a hoarding of washcloths and towels and baby robes and it's just not worth it. I know they will look cute. I know they have different patterns. Just don't do it. Get products you need, not products you just want because they look cute. You'll also want to register for a bathtub. We have the Frida Baby bathtub and it's been working fantastic. It adjusts to depending on what age Reese is and how much he needs to sit or recline in the bathtub. It's great. We fill it up in the bathtub and we're able to just put it right on top of the bathroom sink and it works out fine. If you're someone that does have a large enough sink where you can just put one inside of it, ours just isn't large enough, I recommend the Angel Care bathtub. It's really minimal, really easy to clean. Definitely check that out. In terms of bedding, again, let me find out that you guys are putting baby blankets on your registry and we're gonna have a problem. Don't do it. I promise you. I put zero blankets on my registry and I think Reese has like eight. People like blankets. People love making blankets for you. People like finding cute blankets for you. People like just adding a blanket into a registry gift that they purchased. You will get baby blankets. You don't have to register for them. I promise you, you don't wanna end up with like 15 or 16 baby blankets. So. Reese has like seven or eight of them all made by people that we love. So they're really sentimental to me. So don't waste your time registering for a crazy amount of baby blankets from a generic store. I would say a good rule of thumb to register for bedding is two to three crib sheets. Definitely at least two, three is probably preferred because I definitely will switch Reese's crib sheet out put that in the hamper to watch and then he'll take a nap and then he'll end up spitting up a little bit. And so that one needs to be washed, but I haven't put in a load of laundry yet. So I think three is a really good rule of thumb when it comes to crib sheets. We use the Mushy brand, wash them all the time and never had an issue. They're muslin, so they're nice and breathable now that he does like to sleep on his stomach. Um, and so definitely just get a couple crib sheets. I also registered for a crib skirt. This isn't an essential or something you have to register for, but I knew for a fact I wanted this as a decor piece in a nursery. So I threw that on there and I was gifted that from my grandma. Next for my clothing and accessories category. This is kind of where I think people just like go first time mom crazy and they just start putting on like 20 different outfits and it's like, People like buying baby outfits. I think people get as much joy from buying a baby outfit for an expecting mother as the mom does from buying it as an expecting mother. I think the first things a lot of people gravitate to are purchasing the outfits that are on the registry. And that's great, don't get me wrong, but you have so many other items that you really truly need that I think if you withhold yourself from putting on baby clothes, you'll have a much better chance of getting the essentials that you actually need. 
people will still purchase you baby clothes because they're like blankets. People just like those. And so they'll throw them in when they're walking through the store of Target and they're thinking of you, they'll just grab an item and they'll throw that in with the item that they purchased off your registry separately. So you'll get baby clothes. Don't worry about it. Don't waste your time registering for them. You're going to become a hoarder of baby clothes. And remember, we're talking about how to get us through the first like one to three months. Your baby's going to live in footies. So don't worry about getting that seven piece outfit set that needs to go together. Just refrain, don't do it. We registered for a four pack of hats and that was great. Reese wore them at the hospital, at home. They were all neutral so they matched all of his different footies and I recommend just getting a nice neutral pack of hats. We also got a little pack of mittens. These are the best mittens ever. They never fall off, I'll link them below. It is, I think, like a four or a six packs of white ones. So they match all of his outfits. They can easily be washed and just throw them in with the whites. So pretty much hat and mittens, one pack of each. I'm talking a pack of four and a pack of four or six mittens and that's it. That's your cutoff. Don't go crazy here, people. I also didn't register for any socks and I was still gifted them. And I didn't register for any white onesies, was still gifted them. So don't waste your time going crazy on the clothes because you're still gonna get them. Don't go crazy with the sleep sacks. I think that maybe one or two would work out well. Decide which one that your child likes, if they like their arms up or their arms down, but don't go crazy getting that. One thing that I did not put on my registry that I wish I had is the copper pearl bandana bibs. We have probably like 20 of these white bibs at this point because Reese has always been just such a drooly baby and if he's not wearing them then he's gonna just be soaking through his outfits and we wear them when we feed him bottles. He just will chew on them, suck on them, so we're constantly changing them throughout the day because he just like soaks them. So definitely register for at least one pack of bandana bibs. I recommend white or really neutral color that if baby gets anything on them, you can easily just bleach them and not have to worry, but get some sort of bib. This isn't necessarily something you need to put on your registry, but just a quick note. If you are planning a baby shower, definitely have them bring a book instead of a card. Reese has a stocked library from doing this method. People choose to bring their favorite baby book instead of purchasing like a seven or $8 card that you would get from Target. And can we just talk about for a moment how expensive cards are getting these days? Why? I don't know. But the seven or $8 that would have been spent on a card is now spent on a baby book. So we had them to read and to use. People chose to write little notes inside of the book covers, which worked out well, because now we know who they're from and we can think about them when we read the books. And Reese's library is stocked because we have so many books. So definitely choose to bring a book instead of a card and to throw that on your invitation. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. I wanted to make sure that I hit some main points you wanna make sure you're hitting on your baby registry. I know it can be so enticing to go for those things that are very specifically targeted towards new moms and all the little accessories, but remember, we want to be able to survive and we want to make sure that we are covering all of our bases here. So make sure you are paying attention to really what is essential and what will be most useful to you. As always guys, thank you so much for your support. Please make sure to like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.